You remember the Rwanda scheme, you know, the one the government spent £240 million failing to get off the ground for years. Well, now migrants who have their asylum claims rejected can still find themselves in Rwanda, but with a tasty cash incentive. Here to explain how this would work is Home Affairs editor at the Times, Matt Dathan. Matt, a very good evening to you. Um, the government surely can't think that this is a good idea, can they? Well, I think uh, this has been uh, drawn up since actually Suella Bravman and Robert Jenrick left government in December. Um, so it's been uh, agreed with the Rwandan government in the last few months th this year that we, we understand. Um, and it's, it's a, a, se a separate scheme to the uh, forced deportation scheme. Um, it's a voluntary scheme, so they've already actually started uh, asking and phoning up asylum seekers or failed asylum seekers whether they want to uh, take up the offer of £3,000 to be moved to Rwanda. <laughs> I think essentially what this boils down to is uh, a kind of contingency or black, uh, backup plan by the government. They've got this multi-million pound scheme in place, uh, which has cost them a lot of money, taxpayers' money, but also political capital. Uh, and they are at risk of uh, not using a single flight uh, to, uh, to Rwanda. So they want to make sure that they at least get some people over there to use the scheme before the election. And by offering them three grand uh, to do so, they, they hope that they'll get at least a flight over uh, by the May election. Yeah, can any of us apply to go to Rwanda? Because, you know, this country is in such a terrible state. You know, I wouldn't mind being given three grand to go and live in Rwanda for a while because you could be sure that once you're there and you don't like it, you could just go, oh, excuse me, can I come back now because I don't like it? Well, I don't know if you're a failed asylum seeker, Mike, but uh, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> Sometimes not I wish at I this was. stage. But... <laughs> yeah, I mean, it does, beg, it does beg a belief sometimes, this scheme, to be honest, um, because why would people who have paid thousands of pounds to come to the UK uh, in a very risky way across yeah. the, the channel in a small, flimsy dinghy um, take up the offer of uh, just £3,000 to go to Rwanda um, when they could just leave Rwanda, um, I guess, uh, you know, 4,000 miles away? Why, why would they do that? Um, it doesn't really make any sense. No. The government have... Um, been exploring whether there might be some people who want to take up the offer. I mean, if I was a psychiatrist, I'd say the government has got a problem with the word Rwanda, and they've now become so fixated by it that they'll do almost anything to tell somebody at some point or other, told you we'd get some people to Rwanda? Well, it, it, it comes down to that, the politics of it. Rishi Sunak does not want to be standing at the election uh, with the accusation that he hasn't uh, sent a single migrant to Rwanda despite spending 300 50 million pounds on the scheme. Um, uh, but it's become tot totemic of the whole government's uh, handling of immigration, both legal and illegal, mm. to be honest, the word Rwanda. Uh, this scheme is actually quite novel, though, because although the government have voluntary schemes to return uh, failed asylum seekers and foreign criminals to their home country, they don't actually have a destination, a third country destination. Uh, and this, the, the Home Office do point out that this could, if it worked, provide a blue. A blueprint really for a lot of the failed asylum seekers who are stuck in limbo a lot of afghans iranians for example who have failed to claim asylum in the uk uh, cannot be returned to their home countries for the obvious reasons that the the, the taliban are in control and and and, and the iranian uh, authoritarian regime would um, persecute them so they're stuck here in limbo having failed on the asylum claim but nowhere to to go so maybe by um offering them a chance to go to a third country like rwanda uh, that could solve the problem well, it could, maybe, in theory, very possibly, but, you know, we've been going to do this for a while. That somehow, I'm not really convinced yet. But uh, you broke the story, Matt, last uh, night in The Times. Uh, have you got something for us tonight uh, to see whether anything is actually going to move that's going to convince anyone that Rishi Sunak will get this to happen? Well, we're reporting tonight that, um, as I just mentioned, actually, um, as I broke it to you first, actually, before The Times website, um, that uh, the man. Home Office has already started... Uh, phoning asylum seekers. In fact, in the last week, they've phoned, um, I, I know of an asylum seeker in London and an asylum seeker in York, uh, Yorkshire, that have been contacted uh, in the last week by the Home Office, offering them three grand, told to reply as soon as possible because they might, they might lose the opportunity uh, to, be, to be sent to Rwanda. Um, and they, if, if, they're, if they manage to get a group of asylum seekers who are willing to take up the offer, um, the... The, those individuals will be sent to Kigali, we understand, on commercial flights, and they could happen within the next month uh, because it, it doesn't require, you know, all the legal loopholes that they'll have to go through uh, through the forced deportation. They don't need to be te detained. They don't need to be forced onto flights. They can go on commercial flights that fly to Rwanda uh, three or four times a week now with Rwanda Air, for example. 
um, and go there through their own free will. It's an extraordinary story. Matt, great to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed for coming on to talk to us. Matt Dathan there from The Times uh, with that breaking news, incredible exclusive, which The Times will have in full later on tonight, but we're bringing you first, is that um, basically we're now ringing up people whose phones we've no doubt supplied to them, uh, illegal migrants who may or may not have failed to get in uh, the legal route for asylum. Uh, so we're now asking them if they'd like to go abroad for a little holiday and be paid £3,000. Joining me now, former UKIP leader and border expert, Henry Bolton. Henry, I mean, it just goes from the ridiculous to the absolutely and utterly incredulous, doesn't it? Uh, so we're now, the Home Office is now actually operating as a travel agent, ringing people up whose numbers they have, mm -hmm. who are illegal asylum seekers, illegal migrants who probably have been given those phones, to ask them if they'd like to have £3,000 to go to another country. Uh, it, it, it beggars belief. Look, Rwanda, I've always said, was never going to deliver what the Prime Minister mm. said. It's not going to stop the, f the small boats. Even if everything about it, all the legislation and everything else went mm. swimmingly well, yeah. it would not be a deterrent to crossing the Channel. Right. And, just by the government's own figures, we'd be looking at maybe one in 80, even if it all, all went swimmingly yeah. well, one in 80 people crossing the Channel and claiming asylum would end up being sent to Rwanda. That's no deterrent. We're going after the wrong people. We should be going after... The... You want a deterrent? Deter the people smugglers. Right. Carry the risk to the people smugglers, and then you might have an effect. But first of all, it's an incon inconceived and badly executed plan. Yeah. Secondly, part of that is... Well, there's a whole load of badly executed it, plans it, now. It is. There's it more is. than one. But, but what we've got then is the Prime Minister knows, unless he is far more stupid than even I think he is, that the legislation that's going through at the moment, um, and they're, they're now looking at, the, I think the next reading is on the 18th of March right. of the Rwanda Safety Bill um, and the amendments that came out of the Lords. But he knows, the government knows perfectly well that that is incredibly weak mm. legislation. Mm. He knows that there is the appeals process is still there that anybody he tries to force or the Home Office tries to force to go to Rwanda and they don't want to, then they'll have the same debacle that they've had in numerous other occasions that there will be a last-minute appeal and these people will... It, the whole thing will be disrupted. His only hope, as Matt quite rightly points out, his only hope of getting flights to Rwanda this year is to get volunteers to go. Yes. And he's trying to put a carrot out there which is the three grand. Right. Now, it is... Which, by the way, can I just remind everybody, in case you're confused, is, is our money. It uh, is that's our, our money. money. So, Absolutely. So, he wants to, uh, so you add it to everything else that these people are costing. Yeah. It's 5.4 billion a year. Yeah. Now, three grand... I mean, it's about a hundred, another 120 million if you send 40,000 yeah. people over there, which is the number that come across the channel. I mean, it, so... Well, he's he, not going to do that. But say he even gets 200 people on a plane, yeah. that's 600,000 quid. It is. Of Absolutely. my money. Absolutely. And your money. So, and everybody so, else's money. It, it, it's a bloody joke, The whole joke, thing's shocking. And all it is is smoke and mirrors. Yeah. Bad plan, badly drafted yeah. legislation to make it happen. And so the, the, the shop window piece that he will claim, you know, oh, we've got flights going. After all yeah. this criticism and all this bad press, yeah. all of this, these naysayers, we've got flights going to Rwanda. Yes, because you paid, paid each person yeah. on there three grand to go. Maybe we um, should get them flights to the Euros because then which, perhaps well, they'd, they'd land somewhere like <laughs> Germany, right, watch a few football <laughs> matches and maybe prefer Germany to stay there for a while. Yeah, well, then know. we exclude them because they're football hooligans. Yeah, well, there you go. Then <laughs> you can certainly arrest them and <laughs> but, lock them up. But we shouldn't let these people in. In, in the first place. No. There's, there, are, there is a raft of agreements, not law, but agreements that, in, that bed not in just the a principle raft. that we... That a country... dirigible of them, there is, you know. <laughs> the whole thing's dirigible. Yeah, the whole thing is dirigible. <laughs> but the other, the other thing, right, is that, you know what, the people traffickers will now be saying, and here's another incentive to come to Britain, yeah. because they're now going to pay you to leave. Yeah, even, even right? if you're not successful, you yeah. get three grand to go to Rwanda. Yeah, but even we'll, if you don't care... Then that's more business yeah. for the people. But if I'm sitting in some camp in Calais, I'll go, yeah. I quite fancy uh, 3,000 quid, so I'll go, yeah. to, I'll go to Dover, uh, I'll pretend I want to claim asylum, they'll give me three grand, I'll go to Rwanda, and I'll hang out there for a while. But, you know, it's, it, it, to, it, just for people's information, this scheme already exists... If you're an asylum seeker and you decide you want to go home, right. you don't have to pay your own way. The British government will give you three grand to go. So it's an right. extension. What's happened is somewhere there's been a, a, a conversation. The Prime Minister has suddenly woken up mm. about bloody time. It's funny when so elections that, do that, wouldn't it? I know, yeah. yeah. And, and he said, well, look, are we going to get this through? Well, it's going to be a problem, Prime Minister, with that legislation. Well, how do we get this flight in the air? All he's worried about is the optics. Yes. There is the, the bottom line of this, which should be to manage immigration mm. and limit it, 
is is being forgotten in this right. entire government. He literally, as I said to Matt, wants to stand up at some point or other behind a lectern, whether it's a Tory party conference, whether it's before a crowd of, you know, not so adoring fans, to say, I told you we'd send people to Rwanda. Yeah, exactly. And literally, if it's more than three, he'll call it people. Yeah. But it's not going to happen. It, it, well, it, it may do now because he's paying them three grand yeah. to go. I mean, interesting um, to but know we, what we the must old, not uh, let him off the hook. No, if that happens, don't worry. We've got to remind everybody that all of these people were volunteers because they were paid on. to go back. What happens though if some bozo from the human rights department goes, "Oh, you can't send him to Rwanda because it's dangerous," and the guy goes, "Yeah, no, but I've paid three thousand pounds to go. I actually want to well, go." Well, I, I what happens then? Yeah, but but Mike, I think the thing is that this gets them around all the legislation because the individual has said, oh, "I'm I'm happy to go." Yeah, I'm yeah. not appealing it. I'm not taking a legal process because you've just right. given me three grand in my bank account. Thank you very much. Right. Bank account is probably Which presumably anyway. would then make the argument more uh, more sort of solid for you to say as the government, well, these people are all volunteering to go. So yeah. they must be safe. Yeah, it, well, they it, indeed. So this otherwise. is all optics. It's all theatre. None of this, none of this, and this is the bottom line, is going to have any impact whatsoever on the immigration situation that this country faces. And that's the problem mm. here. The government is not dealing with the problem. The government is dealing with the optics to make it look as though it's going to do something, and it thinks that the electorate is stupid enough to take it on board. But with I'm the, afraid the electorate video is not that stupid and not going to fall No, in, are they? indeed, and that's why the, the Conservatives are polling us so abysmally yeah, at the moment. Yeah, absolutely right. Maybe we should send all of them to Rwanda for 3,000 a time. How well, many people in the Cabinet? I'll get somebody to do the maths on it. 